I have a problem with a lot of things that happen in the Christian space. I grew up in the church. I know what is true and I know what is lies. And it gets on things where they see where not they make sense to me. Which is why I like sometimes when you hit it in the head. You talked about Pastor Jerry Eze. What God cannot do does not exist. Um, and all this healing ministry, come, you are going to be healed. You are going to do this one. You are, oh, we had 10,000 people and 52 people were healed. Please, I need you to sit on that thing. All those what God cannot do doesn't exist. Is it really... And these days, I see people dragging him online that he's using Nigerians to make money, that he's made seven... that he's the highest earner of YouTube. But, I mean, I don't hate him. Yep, yep. I'm just asking, I mean, you to you know reiterate what you said and shed more light on top of what, I mean, on what you said about him saying that what god does not do does things that is uh... you, you know when when that slogan started coming out uh, he, he, people think i'm jealous of jereze jereze is by 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 far my my younger person in me by far he's not even like a son to me he'll be a son to my sons mm -hmm. so i have nothing to envy him for okay i have nothing no reason to envy him for anything but truth is truth. What God cannot do does not exist. It's not, it's not the truth. Because there are many things that God cannot do that exist. Mm. God cannot steal. Stealing exists. God cannot lie. Lying exists. God cannot die. Death exists. God cannot marry. Marriage exists. I mean, there are many things. In fact, James tells us in James chapter 1, verse 13, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted. God cannot be tempted with evil. Now, it's important you know that because it's not about sentiment. It's about knowing what the truth is. I believe in miracles. Mm. I believe in healing. Mm. To be honest with you, I've been healed though. <laughs> there was one time I had pneumonia. They gave me 32 intravenous injections. The pneumonia didn't go. Jeez. I was dying. The doctors looked at me and said, we have exhausted everything we know medically. Mm. I was coughing blood. I was gone. My church, I couldn't preach for one month because when I stand to preach, immediately I speak for two, three minutes, I start vomiting blood. It was that bad. And then I took the Bible and I read Isaiah. Surely he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we were healed. And I prayed. I spoke to Jesus. I spoke to the Lord. After that prayer, I started feeling the pains leaving. I was having pains all over. I broke out in sweat that evening. Mm. And then part of my healing, God sent somebody who came and gave me some natural, natural fruits, mm. a combination mm. that I drank that night. By the next morning, all the cough, everything was gone. I was back on crusade preaching the next day. Mm. So I've experienced miracles. Sure. I've prayed for somebody that was blind and his eyes opened in Aquaibo. That was blind. He came to our crusade. His eyes opened. I've seen miracles. I've raised somebody from the dead. I even have a mark on my finger where I was trying to open the teeth because the teeth had already jammed. Clenched. And the teeth hit my finger and cut it. Mm. And then after praying for a while, the lady came back to life. Her name is Ada. I've seen miracles. But not this RNG that we're seeing today. God is not desperate to perform miracles. Because miracles are not the ultimate the ultimate is eternal life. The ultimate is the forgiveness of sins. The ultimate is a relationship with God. For example, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Where is Lazarus today? He's, He's gone. Mm. All the people that Jesus healed in the Bible, where are they today? They're gone. They're gone. So you can be sick, you are healed, and you end up dying. Which means miracles are not the ultimate. The ultimate is peace with God, a relationship with God that is eternal. Are you seeing the miracles are RNG? Some of, can't you see most of those crutches are all the same color? They are all brand new. Some of those wheelchairs are all brand new. In what world will people come for a crusade and all of them are carrying the same <laughs> brand of crutches? <laughs> and the wheelchairs are all brand new. Maybe they bought it from the same store. That's a question mark. 
And that, that, but that's what God cannot do, does not exist. Maybe he's talking about Miracle there's no problem that yeah. God cannot yeah. solve. That's there's what no, I, there's I no barrenness too. that God, God cannot, cannot give a child. Mm-hmm. There's no this that God can not Not the limitation, sure. not, well, not the this, but there's no problem so, that God, God Maybe that's what solve. he's saying. So, in saying that, the context of miracles is different from the context of God's character. Mm. But you so yourself, here, an English problem, you then. yourself here have said pretext, subtext, context. Good. So the context in which God cannot be tempted, that context is dealing with temptations. But God, what God cannot do does not exist. It's not in the Bible. It's no, a coinage. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is not in the Bible. Mm-hmm. But is that coinage but, wrong? Wrong. Because I, I'm very certain that Again. the understanding when anybody hears that is, is that, that God does miracles, God can heal, God can preserve, God can protect. God can do all of that. But to say what God cannot do does not exist is where the issue is. With God, all things are possible. He can heal, he can deliver, Mm -hmm. he can set free, Mm -hmm. he can do all of that. But again, like I'm saying, within the context of Bible doctrine, where the character of God is concerned, that's where I am talking from. Mm. Not miracle context. The Bible also says that we can do all things. Mm -mm. (laughs) <laughs> the context, through Christ no, no. the us. context of we can do all things okay you can do all things okay but you cannot marry your neighbor's wife you cannot you cannot you cannot take over from Tinibu tomorrow mm-hmm. damn it is an English problem so the context or interpretation it's problem it's an interpretation no, no. problem the or context, an English problem no the context of I can do all things if you read the Paul said I know how to abase I know how to abound. I know how to lack. I know how to have. I can do all these things. These things. So again, context is king in Bible interpretation. I can do all these things through Christ who strengthens me. Which things? I know how to enjoy. Mm. I know how to suffer. I know how to be without. I know how to have. I can do all these things. It's not an omnibus word. It is a word used within a context. So again, that's why in Bible interpretation, context is critical. Once you go out of context, you can make the Bible say what the Bible is not saying. So that's why you must stay within the context of a biblical concept to be able to arrive at what the author was communicating, which is the truth of the scripture. You say- Hi, welcome to the Purchase Portal. If you're new to this channel, please hit the like button, share, and subscribe. Uh, let us put out a disclaimer. Everything we say in this video is our own opinion after searching the scripture because we all have the spirit of God. When we read the scripture, we try to balance scripture with scripture and we try to assess the spirit and the intent of whatever is out there and we bring out our own two cents. So you might not agree with everything we say in this channel and you might not agree with our own standpoint, but that's good. And that is why we say do whatever works for you. But however, let us look at this video. When he talked about in SPPD, what God cannot do does not exist. At first, when they do ask the question, the question was coming from a light of mockery and a light of not believing those things are possible. But he didn't do justice to say, you don't, the fact that people are being healed in their numbers doesn't mean God is not there. Although we have one or two fakes out there, especially when you are speaking as also a pastor and somebody in the field, you understand, you don't talk down on the possibility or the authenticity of miracles. Miracles happen in their numbers when the likes of Rehad Bonke they come for crusades in Nigeria you want to tell me that everybody was coming with uh, brand new wheelchairs when Pastor Paul uh, Nietzsche they go out for crusade and people are healed you want to tell me that everybody there is an arranging no you speak to the fact that yes God is in the business of doing miracle but some pastors engage in falsehood and false practices and fake miracles you have balanced it that way but not saying that you believe in miracle but not this arranging you have generalized the fact that miracles that are happening around in these days are arranging miracles and that person asking you the question wants you to just buttress that that's why i said i want you to sit on that matter Look, you cannot sit on what god cannot do does not exist because the problem with what god cannot do does not exist we see with dr abel damina is english language that's the truth he is big on pretext context subtext or oh, before you understand something about the scripture you need to sit where they sat listen to what they uh, listen to in the language that they understand okay fine but when you say what god cannot do does not exist what do you understand by what god cannot do does not exist you're looking at it from the light of character but the context with which the author who is pastor jerry is a is releasing it is based on the the works of god when it comes to the miracles that is just the truth when it comes to the miracles the science 
is there anything too hard for me that is the word that came to jeremiah i am the god of all flesh is there anything too hard for me god is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we could ask or think what god cannot do does not exist come on this is a simple biblical word not exact the same way in the bible but it is coined from the bible if you have a problem with it and you have a problem with the context you meet the author what in which what contest is this what god cannot do does not exist coined from and he can explain to you and you say okay this is the context which which the author is saying this but when you are saying it in the light of god's character there are many things god cannot do when he quoted james chapter 1 verse 8 if you want to go doctrine now and james was saying that don't say if you want anyone is tempted and you should not say you are tempted of god because god cannot be tempted with evil matthew chapter 4 verse 1 says a different thing because if jesus is god jesus was tempted bible is a mysterious book if you want to use logic and your brain you know to always read bible and for english to english language to compare bible with english language and say let us remain with the english and what was said you're going to miss a lot of points here that's just the truth the problem with nsppd what god cannot do does not exist that we've observed to dr abel damina is english language that's just the truth it's english language english language is a problem nothing else because it is not a bad word it is not from the pit of hell that word is from the bible that's the truth if you say god cannot lie god is so powerful you are trying to compare what god does and what human being does so nobody can wake up tomorrow and say the sun i want to close the sun the sun should not give its light it's not possible you cannot go and close the sun. There are many things that there are limitations to what human beings can do. If you're trying to judge what human beings can do and weigh it side by side with what God can do, that's a lie. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ died and he rose. God cannot die, but Jesus died. The Bible is a mysterious book. Jesus Christ died and he rose again. He died for three days. He rose again. Jesus is God. God died for us. And he rose again. If you if you want to limit it to your brain and try to understand, oh, God cannot lie. The Bible says by two immutable things with which one it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie because the realm with which God stays, the realm of eternity, the realm of absolute power, the almighty, there is no way God will look at something. Even if you can see that thing as red and God say this thing is white, by two immutable things, the power that God wills, the moment he speaks and declares that this thing is white, it becomes white immediately. Even if the thing is red, the foundation and everything that made the thing white because God is not speaking from the past. God is speaking from eternity. He's speaking from the future, past and present at the same time. God is powerful. So you can't come out and say God does not steal. I am the God of all flesh. He cannot steal what he owns. The have earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that do therein. Somebody else, some people are commenting, God does not urinate. God does not. These people are just just they are just they are just ignorant. That's just the truth. The fact that somebody is an astute teacher and an intelligent man or speaker or preacher of the gospel does not make him right all the time. And it does also make him wrong all the time. That's just the truth. So a lot of people that are just angry with all these things and just feeling that, oh, people that are correcting what he is also correcting, they are angry because of the tithes and the offering. That means you are limited. That's just the truth. You are limited in knowledge. Or deep down inside, you don't have the spirit of God. Or deep down inside, there is a spirit of rebellion. Rebellion because, okay, you have been offended or you are just angry with the church. This is the last days, brothers and sisters. Read your Bible. Ask for the Spirit of God. The discerning Spirit of God will actually tell you when somebody is teaching in error or when somebody is teaching something that is not good or when somebody is speaking from the flesh. No matter how intelligent, even as fast as I am talking right now, it does also mean that I'm right. That's the truth. So it doesn't mean that I'm right. So search yourself. Listen to what I'm saying. If you have the Spirit of God, you can be able to separate and say, mm, this one this guy said is wrong. This one this guy said is correct. That's how it's done in the scripture. That's how it's done. In Christianity so please I don't want this say uh, what God cannot do does not exist should be it's not a topic at all he is wrong and he doesn't want to accept the fact that it's an English problem let us look at the context because he answered his own question here what is the context or in what context did Pastor Jerry is a release the word what God cannot do does not exist is in the context of what performing of miracles the NSPPD prayer platform is a prayer platform where people have challenges like he gave an example he was sick and he needed healing in the time of NS people, there are many people that are sick, even as we speak, there are many people that are sick in their dying bed. They are in need of healing. At that point in time, what they need is healing. If somebody is really sick and the person does not want to die, come and tell the person, oh, come and go to heaven. 
come on the person will be like this is not what i need right now i still have a lot to live for i still have life somebody at his 20s is sick and they're like oh gee oh there's nothing we can do receive christ and go to heaven the person you of course it's, it's the right thing to do but that person at that point needs healing so what you administer is healing i would pray that the lord can heal you then if at the point where oh the healing is not coming through they give you are you born again give your life to christ so you can be with god and the last so you can be you can make it on the last day so I don't know how why we are just having all this argument in the body of Christ. And that's why we have a prayer platform on our group. I'm going to put the link. We have a prayer platform where we pray for pastors, where we pray for the church and the body of Christ. We don't pray for our needs. We pray for the body of Christ. That's just the truth. Allow Pastor Jerry Z to focus on his assignment. That's just the truth. Anyway, this is our own opinion. If you have a contrary opinion, there is no problem to it. Um, this is the Preacher's Portal. If you're new to this channel, please hit the like button, share, and subscribe.